Hello everybody! Hello, welcome, welcome. I'm sitting here right now with a very special someone. Who have I got? Me! It, there we go. <laughs> I thought you were just going to sit in silence there and uh, leave yeah. me hanging. Uh, yeah, I've got Boots with me and uh, we're doing something a little bit different here. Boots and I, we obviously make a lot of content together, don't we Boots? Um, yeah, a bit of that. But I don't know whether we've really done much live stuff or made a video no, that think... started live initially. Yeah, I think back in the day when you were on Twitch, uh, you would be like, hey, come oh, on just for five minutes or whatever. That is true, yes. We have done random things like that before. But uh, basically, what's going on here, guys, is um, there's a lot of big news with Guild Wars over this past week. If you watched my previous video, then you've heard a bit about it already, or if you're just in tune with the scene. The uh, new weapons for Secrets of the Obscure were being announced over last week and a little bit before. ArenaNet did them daily, and... Actually, I think on like day two, I, I I messaged you, or you messaged me, Boots, right? And we were like, do we want to do it? And then we never met up. I think you... Wait, I don't remember. I'm trying to... I'm going to say that you messaged me because you really wanted to talk to me about it. Yeah. And Well, I, okay, fine. But then when we when the time actually came, we like earmarked a time and I was like, oh, I can't. I'm too tired. And then basically... Because yeah. you were uh, a vampire at that time. Uh, yeah. Reason. And then suddenly all the days were done. Like, I mentioned this on my previous part. I mentioned this to Boots just a second ago before we recorded. I really wish ArenaNet had done these, like... I know that it's so easy to complain about everything constantly, but it's like if they'd done one weekly, starting, like, way back, you know, because they knew mm. that the weapons were coming with release two, we could have done one a week. That would have been amazing. But they actually blitzed it out, like, so fast. Um, yeah. So, so then, then, so we've met up today. We're going to talk about them. Uh, and I was thinking, should I do one video per armor class or something? But we'll just do them all now. And and I'm actually going to just post the video live first, first uh, as it comes up as well. So you guys in chat can uh, offer your feedback and thoughts and stuff as we go as well. Uh, so hopefully uh, that will yeah. be fun. So that way, yeah, no, that's actually a very smart idea because we could read the things in chat not saying that it's from chat and pretend it's like <laughs> I think people will really see. good ideas <laughs> you can go for that if you like but what i actually youtube live has got like a lot of downsides to it but one of the things i really love is that that chat is embedded there so anyone watching it in the future they get like to see that as well so people might be able to figure out but i mean you can go for it if you like um uh, so yeah, I'm gonna just put the blog post up. Uh, the other, the final twist here, guys, is uh, I don't know anything about this. Like, like boots, you could quiz me right now and say, "WP, what are the weapons for the?" the, yeah. the okay, I'm gonna do that. Ready? Oh god. Okay. Okay, WP, what are the weapons? All right, warrior gets staff, necro gets sword, thief gets axe. Wait, wait a second. Just one sword. Two swords, I think. Two swords. I think he gets two swords. I think wherever they added dual wielding, they made it possible. Uh, um, so um, uh, Mesmer gets rifle. Ellie gets pistol. Uh -huh. Oh, I've got all the lights. That's all the lights done. Who am I? Ranger gets dual wielding maces, but I only know that. I only remember that because I've just clicked the blog post you're, in setting this yeah, video you're up. on the link right now. Yeah, and then... Uh, a warrior got staff. I said that already. Rev. What does Rev get? Scepter, I think? Yeah, single scepter. Uh, Guardian. I want to say Axe, but it already has Axe from Firebrand. I can't remember what Guardian gets. Something get weird. Dual something dual wielding. Dual wielding. Something that they can dual wield. It's not mm -hmm. daggers, I don't think. You want a hint? Yeah, go on. Give me a hint. Pew, pew. Oh, they get pistol as well. There's two pistols. Yeah. Double pistol. So, oh, that's, uh, that's quite interesting. And that's it, isn't it? I think I've actually done a bit better there than I thought I would. I think that's uh, everyone. I think oh, Engineer. I'm missing Engineer. Engineer. Oh, yeah. That one's a interesting one. Uh, engineer. I remember talking about this. It was like I was thinking about gadgets or something. Oh, it's short bow. It's a short bow. Compound it's bow. a short bow. Or a long bow. One of those short bow. Uh, so, yeah. Um, anyway, that's, that's what they're doing now. I've been kind of... Up until a couple of days ago, I've been kind of like a little bit unenthused by this because it's not a full elite spec, all right? Let's call a spade a spade. It's not it's not a, a dramatic new theme for us. There's not utility skills with it. There's not a trait line with it. How amazing can it really be, especially if, you know, you're only getting one offhand or something like that, like Thief only right. gets well, one offhand. Well, you, 
you haven't looked at any of these yet, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but hold on. I felt that way up until a couple of days ago, until a friend mentioned to me that apparently they're actually overloaded with mechanics. They've done a lot of stuff. Now, is that true, Boots? Yeah. Not for all of them. Some of them are not overloaded with mechanics. But for most of them, I would say, yes, they have uh, a... Mecha like, you know the... the um, uh, Catalyst hammer? Uh, yeah, with the... Uh, yeah, the yeah, I'm holding it right now. Three, yeah. Yeah. It has, I think, even slightly more interesting elements in each of them than that. Okay. Well, so... That excites me a little bit more. I'm also kind of concerned that these weapons are just going to be like super, super overloaded and too strong or whatever at the same time, but we'll see, right? So yeah, I think um, if it's balanced properly, uh, it'll be that the weapon's weaker if you're doing the mechanics improperly or stronger if you're doing them properly. But that just means after a little bit of practice, they're always the go-to weapons. I mean, yeah, but it's a skill-based game, right? No, I don't agree. But all right, let's 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 move on uh, before we get too okay. deep into balance philosophy, and we've not even looked at a single one of them yet. Okay, so here we go, uh, and I'll try to do a timestamp. If people in, in the comments drop timestamps for these, that'd be amazing. I'll put them in the description. Uh, and yeah, people in chat saying that Necro Sword is really badass. Or tell Moji says that it is that. cool. That's the that's the one that just came out recently. Yeah, I wonder how much recency bias there is there as well in terms of like people think the newest one that's been announced is the best. I mean, they come out every day. How much exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing, though, because usually when they do pace these things out a bit, there is a lot of recency bias, but not anymore. So, all right. So here we go. So become a force of nature with a dual wielding mace ranger. And by the way, guys, I did want a nice thumbnail for this video. You know, like they used to do the silhouettes that filled in to show all the elite specs like standing together. I guess that's not a thing when there's only weapons, but hey. So good. So this is Taylor Brooks, a designer on the skills and uh, balance team. I'll just read this all out, Boots, because there's okay. not too much. Expanded weapon proficiencies are coming in 2024 during the second major update for Guild Wars. It's really weird reading that as 2024. Mm. I, um, what was I doing? I read something the other day and it was like, oh, this is in 20. Oh, I saw some food in the cupboard and it was like, this goes off in 2024. And I just had one of those weird moments where I was like, I'm in the future. This is really weird. Like yeah, 2024 20... is one of those uh, years that you could read out with a booming voice and it sounds like uh, science fiction. Yeah. 2024. <laughs> and it's like, here we are. Okay, so uh, each profession will have access to a new weapon and skills to utilize against the evils of Tyria. Today, I'll be introducing the Ranger's weapon, new weapon set, Dual Maces. Uh, wielding Maces allows you to become a Warden of Nature, tapping into the power of the land to support your allies while pummeling your enemies. So I'm already wondering, is it a support weapon, or is it a DPS weapon, or is it like a hybrid -y? It can do a bit of both. Um, probably hybrid -y. You'll be able to try out these new skills along with the new weapons for other professions during our expanded proficiency beta, which starts on November 28th. So you just mentioned this to me, Boots. That's like sometime next week, right? Yeah, or a week next week, exactly. Goddamn. So... Uh, Pretty good timing for the video, I think, then as well. Yeah. Um, so we'll actually get to play these in a few days, guys, and I will uh, endeavor to actually do another one of these where we're in there, uh, trying yeah, them out. Stream and, like, actually try them, yeah. So before I click the trailer, main hand mace and off hand mace are sibling weapons that cover different roles while also synergizing very well together. Main hand mace has strong support capabilities through healing and boons. That's such a weird choice, but, you know, Guild Wars does this quite often, you know, like, mm -hmm. we've already got a bunch of maces they're about incapacitation so now they're like screw it let's do a support one right like even though it I seems i want to say that we probably have about half half no like warrior mace is incapacitation uh both of the main and the off yeah yeah the um mechanist is definitely support oh you're right and guardian's very supporty as well you're right actually yeah. then maybe half, the, half. there isn't actually that much need to do another support mace then yeah, so, I mean, maybe they just meld the two together with this one. The, the, I think I know why Ranger Maces come first, by the way, if they're supporty. I feel like, even though, you know, if you play a lot of Guild Wars, if you're really into the, the skills and balance, you do a lot of stuff with it, you're going to be excited about support. You're just going to be. Mm -hmm. But for people who aren't in that headspace, it's always a little bit less exciting to hear about support, I think, for most people. You know, there's a reason most people like to play DPS in these games, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, so they do this one early because it's like, well, look, you might not have been enthused by the support maces, but don't worry, there's lots more coming. You know, they'll save the big meaty da damage yeah. ones for later. And in fact, I'm going to make that my prediction. I'm going to make my prediction that that's what they do, especially with like a necro swords. 
I, I doubt they're really focused on much else. But we'll see. I, uh, so for this this trailer, though, by the way, uh, yeah. I, I, I like the bold choice of uh, costume that the ranger's using. It's very chic, I want to say. Kind of okay. like a rock star. Okay. okay. Um, also, the, the bold choice of using two different mace skins. Oh, hold, the... on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. The trailer's only 20 seconds. Yeah, they're very fast. You should just do it. All right. Okay. Let's watch it. We're going to watch the trailer now then, guys. Okay. So uh, and let's try to have it at higher quality than 360p. All right, so here we go. This is uh, the Ranger trailer. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I just turned up game sounds, and now we're going to go to a trailer, and I don't want to interrupt on it. So. Okay, so here we go. So we have a bear. We got a leap. We got a dodge back. Oh, it's like classic Ranger sword. Is the dodge back the, a skill, or is it just him dodging? It looked like a skill to me. Oh my god, it's so fast, isn't it? Hold on, I'm going to mute it, and then I'm going to play it back at 0.25 speed. Here we go. So this way, guys, we get a whole minute out of it. So that just looks... <laughs> why do they have the bear roaring? Is that actually a part of the mace mechanic, do you guys think? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll read about it. Okay. So maybe it's like after you use a... A, an F2 or something, your weapon gets stronger. Because it's usually a weapon skill gives the pet a bonus to its next strike, but maybe they've reversed that here. Anyway, yeah. so you got the two. I, that just looks like the Mechanist 2, by the way. Right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like, that. I bet that that's the two, that leap in there. That is so... Yeah. like, standard now. Um, the animation looked very untamed -y as well. Big AoE, it looks like. Flowers coming out. I guess the flowers heal me or give boons. It's probably like uh, the end of the auto attack chain splashes boons out or something, I would guess. And then, yeah, there's a I dodge like, back. I like the final thing. Oh, you're still in the beginning of the... Yeah, okay. So he dodges back and then jumps in again. I wonder if the dodge back recharges the cooldown of the two or it's just so low cooldown because it's a two. I'm convinced that's a two, by the way. It might not be, yeah, yeah. but... Yeah, for sure it's a two. For sure it's a two. <laughs> and then it looks like there's a, a heal. It looks a bit like a soul beast, you know, merged heal. Done. It looks like he's giving himself regen. And there's some overhead slams. Oh, can you do... It looks like you can do the... Uh, it looks like the five, maybe, roots you in place and slam, 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 slams. A bit like... Yeah. Um, a bit like Gorsival, right? You're kind of like Gorsival. Yeah, I definitely like that animation, the slam, 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 slam. It makes me think of uh, beating drums or something. Yeah. Okay, all right. So so that's the trailer. Maybe it is better to do the trailer last because we, we would we'll understand what... what these things are. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's read this real quick. So they're sibling weapons. They cover roles. They support each other. They're strong support. As you strike with May skills, you'll bolster your bond with the land gaining a new unique effect called nature's strength. I kind of like yeah. that theme idea, like you're digging into the land and smashing things around. Once so you this is the first introduction of kind of a class mechanic into the, the, the weapon here. A, a mini mechanic almost, a right? Mini mechanic. And I guess uh, we kind of already have mini mechanics if you think of like... You might consider... Well, the catalyst, the catalyst... Uh, uh, yeah, but hammer. I was thinking even more expanded, like how every... Oh, the new... There's a new guardian hammer as well, where you have, like, the teleport to your target that you hit with the... Oh, the, the banish thing? Option. I don't yeah. know whether that's a mini mechanic. That's just an I mean, it is a mini mechanic. I mean, yeah, but everything's a mini mechanic if we go that small. I was thinking yeah. more like, um... <laughs> I don't know. This is a terrible example, but, like, symbols on... It's just symbols as a concept, you know? They're a thing that comes out oh. of weapon skills... But then they okay. hook into no, traits in a big way. Core class. That's yeah, that's kind of a big... It's too big now. All right, whatever. Once you reach six stacks, the land will grant you its favor, and you'll gain another effect called Force of Nature. Force of Nature will reset you... Force of Nature gives you high magic resistance, reduces your... your increases your tenacity, <laughs> and when you take magic damage, it will give you an increasing stack of more magic damage resistance. Wait, is that the wrong game? That's uh, the wrong game. Force of Nature will reset your mace cooldowns as you grow. Ah, is that why he does the two? Increasing outgoing damage, healing, and st stability. Passive Force stability. Force of Nature is a, is a 7 7 game. Is that, uh, this time time is, is that what we're talking about? Oh my god, boots. I couldn't what? hear a word you just said, and I'm pretty sure no one watching the video could hear a word you could say. Oh no, what because, happened? because 
in game. I'm in Guild Wars at the moment, right? Because I thought, oh, that'll be some nice background stuff. <laughs> and Paytha just started screaming at me. <laughs> and I think the meta oh. started. So it did some of that like audio and I have it quite loud. Um, okay, yeah, so sorry, I've, I've turned that down now. <laughs> Say well, I, again? I said a very important thing All about right. Force of Nature, which was uh, that it's a 7-7 seven, seven green creature that uh, has an upkeep of four. Oh, oh. It ooh. actually said create sapperlings, but I was wrong about that. This is Magic the Gathering. You know what? I've never played Magic the Gathering, but I've always thought of that as like one of the most... N I, I live a pretty nerdy life, I would say, at this point, but I feel like that's one of the most nerdy pastimes that I've just never engaged in. Well, uh, MTG. screw you. <laughs> no, I'm not, it's not an insult. It's not. I quite relish the idea of actually playing it at some point. But isn't it like really expensive? Well, whatever, whatever. Let's, let's keep it with the yeah, weapons. Yeah, let's just move on. That we're uh, talking about this. Okay, okay. Offhand mace is more defensive. Oh no, no, no! I've skipped a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're, we just talk about uh, force of nature. So this is so, kind of a big deal, though. Do we? You want to read the whole thing and then talk about things afterwards? Yeah, yeah. Because it will take too long otherwise. We, we should just okay. go power through. Okay. So mace two is called flourish, which damages everyone and heals allies sim simultaneously. Your strike causes the ground beneath you to swell with energy, and after a delay, the ground bursts. The burst deals heavier damage and heals more after than the initial strike. If you hit an enemy with the initial strike, you'll gain nature's strength. So. And then nature strength is building all your stuff and giving you free stability. Yeah. The offhand mace is more defensive. It enhances survivability while also providing some crowd control. Thistle guard. I like the names of these skills. That's skill four. It's defensive skill that rewards careful timing in the thick of combat. You cover yourself in bramble armor, gaining barrier and stability for a moment, even more stability. As thorns strike outward, hitting an enemy with these thorns increases the defensive components of this skill while also granting you nature strength. Maces have a fun, versatile kit that can be used with many different playstyles. I'm excited to see how they can be used with existing builds such as Support Druid, or how they can lead to entirely new archetypes, like a bruiser that defeats their moments in a, their enemies in a moment of power. Sorry, is that a new archetype? That's not just Untamed, no? <laughs> uh, as mentioned above, you'll be able to try out all the uncoming, upcoming new weapon and profession combos in the beta. Okay, and we don't have to read that bit. All right. Yeah, but no, it, I think it's trying to say that it's playing more into that moment of power when you give yourself nature's uh, nature's power. So is the uh, idea the idea is there's kind of a bit of um, like ramp most of the class where you build up and up and then bang you you smash someone down in that moment of power like you have these spikes I so. essentially. I think so. Yeah, and um, and so it sounds to me like they have so the they're saying the offhand mace is more defensive, but that sounds like it's just based on the skill that they talked about. It's more just. Uh, um, more personally defensive. It's not like a support defense. Uh, it really seems like it's just, you know, a bruising ranger kind of defensive rather than a helping other people defensive. Yeah. And I'm get and so it sounds like mace on hand mace main hand mace is the one that's supportive. Um, so I don't know if you'd use them together necessarily for different builds. Probably not. Yeah. But then if you don't use them together. If you don't use them together, then will you make enough stacks of nature's strength to get force of nature? Oh, they might not. I mean, it is weird, isn't it? Because it is it's very, very similar to the whole um, the mechanist maze situation. Where it's like, if it's going to have that support tuning, they're really going to gut a lot of the rest of, as far as PvE is concerned, they're going to gut a lot of the rest of its potency out. Yeah. Um, so I yeah, don't know. My where... question is, my question is, for your builds, are you going to use mace mace all the time? It sounds like it's kind of like a hybrid situation in that case, and so I don't think that's what you would do. And no. if you don't do that, are you going to be get, getting enough strength, uh, stacks of nature's strength to get your force of nature? Oh, yeah. I kind of like the idea that you just run the main hand or whatever to get the stacks of strength to buff your other weapons. So you've got your axe off hand, you've got your your great sword in the other set or whatever, and the, the mace yeah. is purely there to just augment everything else. Also, the blog post never talked about the pet at all, so I guess not really yeah, any... I don't think it, uh, yeah, the barrier... Roar doesn't have anything to do with it. No, it's just cinematic. Damn. Sorry, I'm eating a banana here. Yeah, that's um, that's a bit of a thing, I suppose. Okay, so there you go. So yeah. that's that's dual wielding maces. Uh, while I go to the next page, if anyone's got any further one thoughts, one last about... thing though, I do have one last thing to say. Yeah. Uh, I think a big aspect of the force of nature is the resetting of the mace cooldowns. I think that is what people are going to be using it for a lot. So you can spam a lot more. Yeah. Keep snowballing up. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So number two. We're on to okay. a thief. Did they do mediums and then heavies and then lights? Is that what they did? No. Oh, okay. No, they did. Uh, Is there any rhyme did. to the ordering at all with this? I don't think so. Okay. 
Hell, venomous axes with the thieves' expanded weapon proficiency. Hi, 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 folks. My name is Cow, and I'm the lead uh, skills and balance designer at ArenaNet. Expanded weapon proficiencies are coming. Okay, we so the top bit we can always skip, I guess. Yep, yeah, yeah. The axe is a ranged damage, uh, sorry, ranged damage dealing weapon ranged. that can be utilized by both power and condition builds, depending on the offhand weapon. The core gameplay revolves around throwing axes that linger for a period of time during which they can be redirected by the dual wield skill to strike enemies again. Wow. This sounds yeah. quite involved. Let's take a look at a few skills to demonstrate. Skill 2's Venomous Volley. It throws out a fan of three poisonous axes. Once these axes reach their final destination, they'll remain spinning at the location but won't do additional damage while stationary. Up to six spinning axes. Oh, this is... I've just made that silly League joke, but this is like that League character. Um, I'm not very well informed of League because I haven't played it for years and years, but... Um, there's a character, maybe people in the live chat can say, that like throws feathers down and then like recalls them to do damage. Mm. It sounds a bit like that to me. Um, By the way, you got, it sounds like you have to turn down your in-game sound. Bit. Oh, is it? Yeah, the meta's too loud, is it, guys? Intense music. I don't know. Is it definitely too loud? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. Well, there you go. So look, it's, it's because the thief is epic, guys. All right, I've turned it up. Yeah, very epic. <laughs> um, I was just thinking myself that it sounded quite loud, but I like the music. Uh, so yeah, anyway, um, up to six can be active at once. Again, this kind of feels like you build to a power spike and then you do something with it, you know, a little bit yeah, like the Moses. So the dual wield with an offhand dagger is Harrowing Storm. The thief will teleport to a targeted enemy recall all the spinning axes back to themselves. Wait, 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 can I just, just to be clear? Yeah. You get two axes or one axe? You get one main hand axe. Okay. And now, now you, that's a very important question because when the post on Twitter first came out, it said two axes, I believe. Oh no, no. oh yeah. dear. All right. All right, so you get one main hand. So when they say when you have a dagger, we're talking about having, you know, the, the bouncing dagger and we're talking about having cloak and dagger with it, okay? So, um, <clears throat> we, where, where were we? Uh, we were at the dual wield, uh, yeah, Harrowing Storm. Enough. Teleport to an enemy, recall all the axes back to yourself, augmenting the axes to also inflict torment. Oh, weird, they put a bit of condi on there. The returning mm -hmm. axes maintain their original properties. So, in this example, the returning axes that were created by Venomous Volley will inflict both torment and poison. For maximum value, build up more axes before recalling them. As struck enemy, as an enemy struck by five, also gets immobilized. Oh wow! And they're going to yeah. show off the rest of them on a live stream, and you have the beta. Oh wow! These blogs are not as detailed as I thought they were. There's only three skills. Yeah. Well, okay, there's more than three skills. I mean, there's more than three skills because of the dual skills. But so this one's interesting. Now I want to know what creates. So skill three always pulls back the axes. No matter what you do, all, all the skills it does pulls back the axes. Right. Skill two generates three yeah. axes. Yeah. Is it the only thing that generates axes? Does the auto attack generate I axes? I would assume, Maybe. I would assume that the last hit of a three part auto attack chain Generates possibly an axe. but maybe they'll show it in the in the video i'm not sure yeah here maybe we go it does, maybe it doesn't but oh you're gonna do the video yeah yeah let's watch the video okay. let's see what we can see you've seen this before right yeah okay oh they've picked end of dragons as they're saying oh and he, has he got the connect size axes that's pretty fucking cool yeah oh wow they they that's not how i imagined it at all that's stealth. Oh wow. Okay, it looks like it has Ranger Axe three on there as well. Um, you know, with like the chill explosion, except it's not a chill explosion now. It looks like golden. Right. Um, so so yeah. It, uh, to me, from that video, it looks like the auto attack. Unless they never finish the auto attack, it doesn't put out axes. So the only way to get those axes spinning out there is using your two skill. So. Probably for this weapon, you're going to want to always have six spinning axes before you use your three skill, which means you're always going to be doing two, two, three, two, two, three. Uh, from a so, very PvE perspective, this is, right? Like if we're oh, P about that's PvE, rotation, but probably also for PvP. I, I mean, no, no, no. PvP is very dynamic. You wouldn't just have a rule where it's like, oh, I can only press this button. Would you use this, this in PvP then? Well, I think it would be a failure if it's not available on any level for World versus World and yeah. PvP. 
I there's actually quite a few things that I want to know about this weapon for PvP. Like, for example, if you go invisible as uh, with this axe, do the axes that are floating out there also become invisible? Oh, I doubt that. That would be crazy. It seems like it would be really fun to play against, actually. Like, there's something interesting to track and look at. You know, you look at where yeah, the axes like, are. and three you... axes out there. It's not that important yet. And there's six axes. you got to get worried. And then, uh, like, as soon as they start coming back, you got to dodge. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, like... Depending on what the thief is set up as, okay, what? How are these axes going to come at me? Is he going to teleport next to me and then they'll move in? Is he going to? But we don't know what the other skills are yet, so it's kind of hard to tell. I'm interested that in the trailer they have him stealth, and I'm assuming that's because they want to demo the ambush skill. Um, because you're obviously going to get talk about the ambush skill. Sorry, they didn't talk about the. Ambush well, I know, though. but I'm assuming that in the trailer they want to demonstrate because there's like there's oh, two explosion. There's two reasons why he would stealth here. One, stealth is on the kit, which I don't believe is true. Or two... I think it, they just demonstrated it. Well, yeah, but he stealths, but then he. I think that's just to show the ambush. That's what I'm trying to tell no. you. Yeah, exactly. The ambush looks like it, it's an explosion. I know, I know, but what I'm saying is you could also interpret it as there is stealth on the on the, the axes themselves. Oh, no. Which is undisclosed, but that's like, what I'm no, trying to say. He's, he's got an offhand uh, dagger. He just... Stab him with the dagger. It looks yeah, like. it looks like he uses cloak and dagger. He dodges through, and then what he does is it looks like the ambush guys is basically Ranger Axe 3. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with an explosion, so there's an AoE, I suppose. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's what Ranger Axe 3 does now. So. Oh, right. It's like the chill yeah. AoE. But yeah, I, I like the colors, by the way. It is very cool. I'm very on board with the theme of this because it is the Canaxi set, right? It's like these big... Yeah. I can see why they picked... I can see why they picked End of Dragons, the Jade Sea, and I can see why they picked um, that weapon skin because all the animations are very gold, which is kind of cool, you know? It's a nice vibe for Thief. Um, and we could finally be an Axassin. You can be an Axassin. Wow, that old... <laughs> token from all those years ago well done uh and i guess can is kind of thematically fitting to secret of the obscure because demon um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah well but wow I, I can't believe that I, I honestly thought each blog post was gonna go into everything but it doesn't if if the axes don't go invisible when you go invisible yeah it it definitely feels like it's the most it's like the least thiefy thief weapon because it's just all out there if you want to avoid the damage from it you just walk away from the axes yeah but there's a matter of timing and stuff i don't know yeah. whether that's necessary I but i do like the idea that you're putting forward there that when the thief stealths the axe is stealth as well so there's this whole other dimension now of like playing memory game of like you got to remember where they are that does mm -hmm. actually sound like a cool twist i have to say um, of course, it doesn't really mean anything for PVE, which is the vast, 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 vast majority of the application of all this stuff. So uh, I, I, I think a fun, a fun little uh, thing to try would be uh, five thieves with axes as a team, and then going into battle with thirty spinning axes on the field. <laughs> you know, once years ago, I for the fun of it, back when um, Chrono Phantasma was kind of new or it just had a rework. Um, I wanted to. I, I I went into a PvP game with five mesmers, where all they did was spam stealth and spam as many phantasms as you possibly can with Chrono Phantasma. So there was just an army of phantasms everywhere, and I thought that would yeah. be like a really funny, interesting gimmick. And we just got destroyed. <laughs> but you know, uh, it was a fun idea. <laughs> uh, it did not work very well though. All right, so there you go. So that's thief. Yep. Oh, okay. So my. F the one I was most excited about was Staff Warrior. Yeah. And that's I the I like next the one. idea of it as well. And I was hoping for a certain thing about it, but I don't think I saw the certain thing when I read or saw the video of it. So we'll see if it still comes to be. Okay, so I just want to say as well, when this was first announced, so I think it was U Boots, or maybe it was a comment on YouTube or something. Someone put forward the idea that essentially it's a banner that you carry around with you and support. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a meat. That's exactly what it is. Actually, it looks very, very, very close to that. Um, I mean, they definitely chose a banner-like skin for the <laughs> for the weapon on the video. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. There. Okay, so Warrior has been lacking a strong weapon to use in its support builds. That's true. There's two classes in that place, as far as I can make out. Well, three, maybe Necro as well. No, but Necro kind of has Scourge to. It doesn't need the weapon. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, Mesma being the other one. But anyway, Mesmer, staff serves yeah. to fill out some of the tools that Warrior needs to support their allies. Uh, so if this is like a shout healing, 
something good for Shout Heal Warrior. I, I'm well up for that because I really like the idea of that archetype. And I think that one of the areas that Guild Wars lacks a lot of diversity right now is in supports. So yeah. staff will be playable alongside the new weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, jumping in to help. One of the key goals for staff skills was granting warriors the ability to charge to the front lines of battle to empower and support their allies. And for that, we have the uh, slot two skill, Valiant Leap. Valiant Leap causes the warrior to leap to a target location, healing, granting offensive boons to nearby allies upon arrival. As a so this sounds a bit staff three for druid almost. You know, that's like mobility on a support kit. Yeah. Um, yeah. As a, but obviously the proof will be in the pudding just how far it takes us or whatever. As a frontline yeah. support, we also wanted staff warriors to be able to bring some personal survivability to the table, which is found in uh, slot 5 with Bullet Catcher. Bullet Catcher starts off as a channeled block skill, but also grants access to a secondary skill, Defiant Roar. Defiant Roar heals nearby al allies with the amount increasing for each attack blocked by Bullet Catcher. I quite like that, and I can imagine the animation is like it spins. In fact, I bet that that's what that frozen image on the thumbnail of the video is. That's Bullet yeah, Catcher yeah, in action. Yeah. That's cool. Um, up to a reasonable amount, of course. I like the way they phrase that in the blog post as well. Like, they're non-specific about the exact balance, because all they're trying to give you is the idea, not like... Because if they type the wrong number there, then people will scream OP, and it doesn't really matter, because it'll get yeah. balanced, you know? Uh, and so they only talk about two skills here, but I, if I, if you look carefully, I think the um, video kind of shows all the skills except for the burst skill. Okay, we'll get there in one second. One, one more, two more paragraph. Well, no, one more paragraph. Oh, oh no, 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 that's it. That's it. Oh that's god, it. that is it. I, I just got to say, by the way. All right. Um, boots on a weird subject. You know nostalgia, right? <laughs> you know how I've you feel. You, but you know how it feels to have nostalgia. Do you yes. do you feel like I made this observation in a recent video? Do you feel like there are different like flavors of nostalgia, based on what you're nostalgic about? The feeling is slightly different. Do you do Absolutely. you you do get what I mean with that, right? Like there's yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're very personal, specific things to you. I'm getting some nostalgia here right now from this screenshot because one very strong, very happy, really good feeling because of the release of Guild Wars 2 when they did the original skill previews where you would see like an elementalist casting phoenix in a river or whatever the very first ones and they were all in vanilla areas and they were fighting basic enemies like drakes and stuff i'm pretty sure earth elementals factored into them and that was such an exciting amazing oh thrilling feeling of this big new amazing mmo coming out and being so excited for it and this warrior screenshot is exactly like that look at it Actually, I think it's in Grothmar, so it's not technically in a vanilla place. That's Grothmar, isn't it? That's a screenshot. Yeah, I think that's Grothmar. With but anyway, he's fighting an Earth Elemental, and I, oh my god, it's filling me with the strongest feeling. It's so weird. <laughs> and it's new. Um, yeah. Yeah, all right, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure that's not too interesting. I mean, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that evoked that in you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I just had to let everyone know because it's so important. All right, here we go. So we'll watch it normal speed first, guys, and then, uh, and then we'll do slow-mo. So it's it's rolling boots. Oh my god, the leap is crazy. I'm looking forward to it. And it's a skill two leap, right? So that means it's not like skill three on Ranger. It's skill two, which means you probably have it on maybe a six or eight second cooldown. Yeah, very quick cooldown. Oh wow, they're so short. Um, I know. Yeah, the auto attack chain looks just very similar to like Daredevil -y stuff, doesn't it? It doesn't really look. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. else are they going to hit? So it's another Malay staff. Once upon a time, that used to be a hell of a, a revelation that there was going to be a Malay staff. I wonder how many people are even <laughs> fascinated by that at this point. Mm -hmm. It would be yeah, so well, cool I mean, if you could play this ag aggressive, you know. But I mean, I I'm sure it's like a bruiser if you're just using it uh, as as not a full-on support situation. Yeah. I, I love the leap. I'm looking forward to using the leap a lot. Um it, it looks like it's going to be fun to use. It's going to be useful because you get to teleport to your uh, allies to heal them and stuff like that. Um, useful just in, in, you know, just in a fighting sense too, like on a battle. The thing is with Warrior, right, as well. Warrior to me is like the the definitive I move fast with my weapons kind of class. You know, you look at great sword, mm -hmm. you look at sword. So it's going to, it's got that stuff to compete with. And it looks like it, I mean, it obviously depends on the cooldown, but it does look like it fits in very, very well. Yeah. And it's got, I mean, a lot of warrior leaps, not all of them, but a, a good amount of them are, you know, to the enemy. And this one's a targeted leap. So that's always fun. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So it's like it's easy. using the new thing from End of Dragons where you can target yeah. an ally or an enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but I think no, I think it's a targeted area. Oh, ground targeted. Ground targeted. Ground targeted. Yeah. Um, so the one thing that's missing from this video though that I'm worried about is when the idea of a warrior staff healing support kind of situation came out, uh, I was really hoping that some skill on the staff would drop a water field. Oh, right. I think I remember you talking about that. It looks like... It... No, it's that not was a water. Ago, yeah. But because if there's a water field, uh, a warrior has so many options for like finishers, blast finishers, yeah. blade finishers, whatever. You could warhorn it, five it, for example. That would just feel like such a nice it, combo. Any of the physical skills, it just it works well. They have a lot of finishers, but the only fields they have are fire fields. And if they had a water field, they could be a little more supported that way. Um, and also, there's a new relic out that um, anytime you do a blast finisher in any field, actually though, it heals. Uh, yeah. It, it heals your allies, yeah. So I think that would be nice. But I don't see it. Maybe it's on the burst if we're lucky. If we're not, then what are you going to do? It's interesting. I just, when you were speaking there, I had such a strong realization of like, you know, we've done this kind of content a lot over the years, like a lot, a lot. And mm. we, we always go in the, like the same patterns, the same loops where you'll say something like that and then it will be, oh yeah, but maybe one of the utility skills gives it to you or maybe the mechanic gives it to you. And there's just none of that anymore. It's just very, this is what it is. Very digestible. It's very... So if we don't see a water field here, there's probably, and if they didn't That's talk about it, it's probably field, yeah. not going to be there. <laughs> but because what, what I thought as well was I thought, oh, well, any field, I wonder if they have another field on there. But there isn't another field, and there's not going to be utilities or, or, or a mechanic yeah. or anything. No. It looks like it has two movements, by the way. It looks like it has the one that yeah, the video opens with, and then, yeah, there's a little rush. And uh, there's a dodge back. I don't know if that was part of the rush or if... Yes, I, I'm noticing almost every video at the moment, they've had a dodge in it. And I'm like, is that actually a part of the weapon or is the the, the plate, the, 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 the video yeah, like demonstrated just dodging? If you're showcasing the weapon, for some reason, they're also showcasing <laughs> the ability to dodge. I know. I was thinking, <laughs> these videos are so short. We literally have like a limited number of frames to digest. And suddenly when you're dealing with that, it's like, oh, I wish they never dodged. <laughs> Yeah, you can't. It's a waste you're, of time. you're using up my budget. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's the question, like you just said, is it actually a part of the weapon? I, I think that's a regular dodge, though. I think that one is a regular mm. dodge. Also, this guy's using utilities. He pops signet of um, might there, signet of strength, signet of might. Oh. Or maybe yeah. he. Hold on. Doesn't a trait proc that as well? Maybe. But there you go. So he kills the earth elemental. I'm I'm reasonably excited about this one. Yeah, I think it. I think if it can actually be enough to make a warrior support build good, I think if the burst skill is good for Berserker, for example, and you could be a, a quickness support uh, yeah. on warrior, a lot of people were hoping that that would be possible. So it would be nice. Yeah. From a competitive standpoint, like the balance is okay at the moment, but it's also quite stale for me. And um, I think one of the reasons it's been stale for a long time is because when you actually look at that support slot, there is so much potential in Guild Wars. Like, especially now that this thing's coming out for the Warrior. Like, everyone has a theoretical line and a theoretical place where they could do really well support. But so many of them are so undertuned, they just cannot yeah. compete with Guardian or Tempest. That's it. It's like there's nine potential slots there, and we've just been slogging away with two, maybe two and a half, for the vast majority of the game's life. And I think that's so sad. So I'm looking at stuff like this. Um, to, but I think it it's going to take more than a weapon. But, you know, Warrior Support's kind of got a bit of a look in as a bit of a funny yeah. pick every now and then. So, I don't know. It is interesting, though... Uh Someone says it kind of feels like a tank kinder, tank kiter kind of weapon. Like if we're talking about a tank for uh, instance stuff, for example, it kind of does feel that way, especially with the Defiant Roar thing at the end, the uh, bullet catcher slash Defiant Roar. You could tank it and then heal your allies. Oh my god. But, yeah, sorry. But the main heal on this weapon, it seems, is the skill 2 leap. And if that's the case, if you're using your leap to heal your allies, doesn't that bring you out of position as a tank a lot? And it, it's kind of like... Well, if you can if you can use it on yourself, you know, you just click the UI and it will just jump on top of yourself. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you saying all that just made me realize it made me think about um, doing hands at Deimos on a rev mm. with the blocks from the Staff 3 and I just realized Bullet Catcher is just rev Staff 3. Just put on a 47. Just put on, the, put on the 5 instead. 
So yeah, there's a lot. I think I don't know how much people have been talking about this. I'm very curious with the live chat. I'm curious with you as well, Boots. I'm curious with the comments. How much of um, like EOD? There was a big. There was a lot of conversation and there was a lot of kickback about the fact that a lot of End of Dragon stuff seemed to be animation skill ideas that we've already seen before, just maybe slightly recolored. Um, but you could feel it's they're pretty much, you know, they've repurposed and reused the same stuff a lot. Mm. It looks like this stuff here is the same to me. I've, I've Most of these animations you can spot. It's like, oh, we, we've already actually had this experience with this class, or whatever. Now, I, I personally don't know whether I actually care because yeah, that's, that's it's okay. like the, the boons and stuff that's bundled with it does change it. But in terms of, like, look and feel, uh, that really got under a lot of people's skin. But then, then again, bullet catcher there. It is. It's going to be Rev three, Rev. You know, and you're going to be it's, it's daredevil looking autos. You know, it's it's stuff that we've had before. Do you guys care very much about that? Do you, and oh, I'm curious as well. Like over this past week, as this stuff's been revealed, has uh, has the community been going on about that or not? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I think I if it was new elite specs and it was it was animations that were all the same, uh, I'd care more. You know, if it was like a f Except for, this is just the weapons, and I, I'm okay with it. You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, moving on. We're on to rev now. So we've done. What have we done? We've done two mediums, and now we're doing two heavies back to back. So they're saving the lights for for later, it seems. Um, mm -hmm. So revenant. Revenant. I'm fairly excited about. Are you with just a scepter? Oh yeah, it's only three skills. Just in terms of like, I like Rev as a class and like as a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people are asking for Scepter Rev. There's a lot of people that, you know, there, there's like these big go-to weapons people want just in terms of an idea. And like that idea of a caster Rev, people have wanted yeah. for a long time. The thing is, people usually attach it to a ritualist concept, right. which it, which itself is problematic because of... You have spirits already. Beca because of Carla, exactly, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of weird decisions over the years. Hamstring, what can be done in the future. But okay, so here we go. Expanded weapon proficient, blah, 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 blah. We already know. All right. Don't cross the streams. I like it. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of beams, I guess. I'm, I'm going to guess, just from that, Boots, I'm going to guess that skill three is like a channeled beam, like a, like a Mesmer three. Actually, no, 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 no. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change my mind. It's a scepter auto that is like the Are druid. Are you changing it because you read the first line of the second no, 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 no. <laughs> I haven't read anything. I swear to God, I haven't read anything. I'm looking like okay. away from the screen here. I'm looking at the live chat. So basically, my your... guess is um, that it, it's like druid autos, but feel, but feels more like Mesmer three. All right, so it's just beams everywhere. That's what I'm mm. guessing. Is like the. Okay. The okay. bread and bar. Okay, here we go. Revenants build scepters in an unorthodox way that's unique to their profession. Having observed the cryptus in battle, ooh, a little bit of lore here, a little lore justification. They draw upon their ability to connect individuals together. Whoa, using the scepter as a conduit. Mm. What? They use this cut. This one I'm very captivated by. They use this conduit to channel energies between targets, strengthening allies and debilitating enemies. I like this. I like tether mechanics. So the Rev can tether allies to each other, and then there mm -hmm. is their responsibility not to move too far away and break it. That was uh, actually one of the cool all... things about Spectre that... Oh, no, not that? I, I'm not sure. I, keep reading. Okay, the Revenant's auto-attack chain projects a concentrated stream of energy from the tip of the scepter, which they wield like a blade to swing in a wide arc, damaging multiple enemies. The first attack, Serene Strike, is a simple melee slice, while the follow-up... Acerbic cut will grant might to allies. Motivating Whirl is the third attack of the auto attack chain, which cleaves enemies in a 360 degree radius around the Revenant and applies barrier to allies on impact. Hold on, hold on. This is a melee scepter. This is a melee. This is like a well, scythe scepter. This is like a, a big, a great axe scepter. Is that the, the, the idea? I don't, I, no, I, I don't think that's the best description, but kind of. It's like somewhere in between. It says a melee slice from Serene Strike. God, yeah. it sounds like a melee attack chain. Right, but I think there's like range to it because of the fact that it, it starts off as a beam. And yeah, 
Does it cut off as a beam? They just say it projects a concentrated stream of energy. That sounds like that's just law justification for why there's... And look at that screenshot. Look at the first screenshot. It looks like he's got a big-ass axe back there. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. not. Maybe it's just energy. I like this, by the way, because, again, this is like, all right, we've had ranged hammers. We've had, you know, um, what else have they done that's weird? The, rain, the Revenant ranged hammer is definitely one of the weirdest ones. Anyway, we've never had a Malay attacking scepter, so... Ooh, and Revenant true. is like a heavy armor soldiery kind of guy, sort of fits. All right, okay, yeah. so the second skill, Blossoming Aura, infuses an enemy target with energy from the mists, dealing damage over time. Okay. After a delay, the energy explodes outward, dealing damage and granting barrier. There's some supporty stuff here. The effect can be strengthened by repeatedly striking the enemy with auto attacks, causing the final explosion to do more and even more barrier. While cast, that's, sorry, I was just thinking that's fun. That's that's nice that the the auto attack, uh, you know, pairs up with the other skills to to do combos. It's and funny you say that it. because I was thinking that's essentially irrelevant in a PVE scenario because you're gonna be using autos as filler between the skills anyway. Not necessarily. What do you mean not? I mean if you're if you're hitting a boss in pve yeah. you're gonna use you're gonna use your buttons and then you're gonna use auto attacks and then you're gonna, yeah, use, you're gonna buttons. use your buttons and then use auto attacks but the question is will you use skill two auto attack before using your other buttons and then use the other buttons uh, i see i don't know to me it, pve is so simple when once you've got a, like rotation worked out that you're just you're just following a, a line of like one two three yeah. three two yeah. two. Yeah, so this is this is it's, it's arbitrary. It's really mad. I think you're right, but is it more interesting for other? Mobiles? I think yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. This effect can be strengthened by repeatedly striking the enemy with auto attacks, causing the final explosion. Blah blah blah. While this can be cast at range, if you want to maximize, you'll need to get in your enemy's face. Ah, I see. That's that that's a cool there twist. You to it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So you can initiate it early, but now you're not in a position to pay off if you're doing it from range. Finally, Otherworldly Bond is an upkeep skill that creates a spiritual tether between you and your target. The tether has differing effects based on whether the target is an ally or an enemy, very spectery. When used on an ally, the tether continuously grants might to the target and allies around you. Okay, so mm -hmm. you can generate good AoE might to all five targets, not just one. When an enemy is being tethered... Isn't it kind of irrelevant then that you've tethered one guy? Uh, yes. It's Except interesting that the, the, the AOE might... Target, well, you could target the furthest away person, right? So that they're still getting the effects, even if... Only yeah, you got, like, that it. sixth player. You can do a, some yeah. funny stuff like that with Spectre as well. You can kind of hit six targets by doing stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would have been more interesting if the, uh, the AOE might was pulsing around the target, because then it actually matters who you've targeted. I don't know. When an enemy's being tethered... The target will instead be inflicted with Vuln and take additional strike damage from the Rev. The tether can be manually broken with the accompanying follow-up skill deactivate and it will automatically break if the Revenant moves too far away. And like Blossoming Aura, attacking enemies cause the effects of the tether to strengthen. So you, what, pulse more might, I guess? Pulse more Vuln? Yeah. But that's not yeah, all. I, I... Sorry, go. <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, when the tether reaches maximum strength, the Revenant gains a new follow-up skill called Otherworldly Attraction. The allied version allows the Revenant to shadow step to their ally, granting barrier. When an enemy is targeted, it instead pulls the tethered target towards the Rev while applying additional Vuln. Look at that! Boots, they gave us every detail there. That's all the details of all the skills. Because uh, there's only three weapons. But, uh, yeah, that's a lot of detail, though. Yeah. It's a lot of detail, I gotta and I gotta it is show. pretty complicated, actually, for three skills. Um, do you think... I think so. I think I think it's just complicated enough to. So th this is the other thing with this. This sounds like the kind of weapon set that you're not going to swap off of. It, like a lot of these weapons have these, you know, all these intricacies baked into them that you need to be on it for quite a while. Like there's not just swapping back and forth every ten seconds. You kind of have to stick with a weapon and and. Yeah, I, I can see that. For I can, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought about any of that, but you're right. There is kind of a thing with Guild Wars where it's like you tick on and tick off with the weapons, but here it's mm -hmm. almost like I want to be continuously autoing because uh, on the axe because the payoff is from the axe here. It's not like I set up the payoff on one weapon set and then I auto on the other. You know exactly. Yeah, that's an interesting thought, and maybe there's more stuff. I mean, you know, more stuff coming up that's like that, and it feels like. 
you'd linger on the weapons for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how, so in chat, someone says it depends on how you fast think? you can build yeah. into otherworldly attraction. That's true. It all depends on the cooldowns, really, with regard to that. You know, if you're looking at over yeah. 10 seconds for each thing, then there's a reason to swap away. Um, yeah. And I understand why they <clears throat> why they uh, say the you'll pulse might around yourself, because if it is a melee weapon and you're attacking the boss, for example, the, everybody else is going to be next to you on the boss. So Yeah, so, it just yeah. makes the the thing it just makes it a little bit less interesting i guess i really like the idea of the malay autos i'm gonna eat some banana and watch the trailer here here we go three two one go oh we look like a firebrand oh we need to zoom out oh yeah look, it's a giant sword yeah it's like a lightsaber giant lightsaber that is so cool okay i, I, I don't know what the range on that melee attack is Melee attack. Yeah, do you think it's like a, a 600 situation? Oh, not 600. It might be like kind of like... Um, yeah, 600 flame obscene. Thrower, flamethrower 450. Yeah, that, that, that could be quite cool. I really like... Okay, that, the Scepter, that's the big win for me. I'm most excited about that at the moment. Of everything. I think they've done a cool twist. I think it's got a cool animation. The tether stuff, I don't know how that's really going to play out. Or how keen I am on it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's... And that's partly so because Scepter kind of felt a bit or the lame duck in some ways to me. Uh, Spectre, sorry, over EOD, but yeah. Yeah, did they say that... I forget if I read it or not. Did they say that the the tether uh, drains your energy? Um, No, I don't think they did. Okay, never mind then. What, like cost you a pip? I think that would be really yeah. aggravating. I kind of hate well, the energy course, mechanic. Well, of course, it would. But, it, but they have the... Um, because if you do it on an enemy, you get extra strikes, right? Just like with, um, with you know, Shiro skill. Fought, impossible uh, odds. Of, impossible odds, exactly. Yeah. So I wonder if they stack, and if they stack, then does it drain more energy? I forget. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's a good point with the energy, though, as well. I don't know. I kind of just want to see minimal energy costs. Because energy always messes with the flow of Rev and makes it kind of just feel lame to me. I don't know. But oh, yeah, yeah that... no, there you go. Otherworldly bond. It's an upkeep skill. Oh, is it? De- is it definitely an upkeep? Yeah, that's what it says. Oh yeah, you're right. Wow, an upkeep on a weapon skill. Yeah. Should be interesting. I wonder how many. I'm, I'm going to guess three pips. No. Three pips. No way. No way. Three I'm going to guess one pip. One I'm pip. Eight pips. One pip. Two at most. There's no way, uh, no way would it be three pips. Why not three pips? Three it's pips too fine. costly. That's so expensive. That's so costly. That kills, like, you've got to think, because revs want to use the legend stuff at the same time. And it's true. And the only really good way of regaining energy is swapping, oh, swapping legends. Not yeah, swapping yeah, weapons. you could still you can linger. That's, weapon. Yeah. Yeah. You but I don't know. I, like, if Renegade taught me anything, it's that high energy costs are just miserable to play with. You know, like, a lot of those Revenant F abilities... Oh man, do you know what? Honestly, I just sort of realised something. I think I would be more excited about Secrets of the Obscure if there were like refreshes to the previous elite specs and just these new weapons. Like if they went back to like Renegade and looked at you know the, like the ferocious strike mechanic or whatever it's called, uh, Carla's fervor oh, I think it's called actually. Looked at the F skills and like re- rejiggered a bunch of them. I would be so keen on that um, over this. But yeah, sorry, go I- ahead. So somebody in chat, and by that I mean me, definitely just me thought of this. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. It's okay, we'll edit it out. Like like in you know the normal videos we do, we have that little edit pass. Exactly. It's okay. They they said they want energy drain on the weapon. Uh, like the, it is getting it. It has the attribute skill, otherworldly bond. They want energy drain on it because of certain trait interactions. Some traits need you to have it to be using an upkeep skill in order for them to be activated, right? Uh, there's a couple, I guess, but you there's have few, upkeeps but... anyway for that. You I know already you have, have an upkeep, not a, but not, not, uh, not necessarily good ones on every legend. And this is on a weapon, so you could use whatever legends you want now. I don't know, man. You're literally talking about Ventari there. That's it. Yeah. Vent- yeah. It means okay, maybe I can play a DPS Ventari with a scepter because now the tether is giving me seven percent more damage from invocation. Two, I don't know. If it is only one or two pips, then that's good too because you don't have to use those huge. Uh, cost upkeep skills. I guess on Herald, yeah. You, the, there's, yeah. Uh, how does Herald... Oh, no, no. The Herald traits are only the Herald facets. I don't think you would get a Herald 
bonus on that because I think that they only count for facet upkeeps. It's not just all yeah. upkeeps. It's just the facet ones. Yeah, I'll have to look at that. Anyway, things to test. Yeah. Um, all right, next is Warrior. Oh, no, no, it's not Warrior. <laughs> this is what I'd usually edit out, guys. All right. <laughs> Oh, we're flying by the sea of a pass here. So the Colossal Greatsword skin arrives to solve your monumental problems. There's a new skin in the in the gem store. Uh, your enemies will tremble at the sight of this massive weapon. Its raw power is awe-inspiring. Do you, <laughs> but do you have the strength to wield it, Boots? Will you take that challenge and, and give you. them your gems? Honestly, um, I don't have this thing. I actually saw this. I thought this was one of the ugliest weapons that I've seen them put in the store. I mean, it's, it's very, just uh, so, too plain, you know? People were saying either Final Fantasy or um, Berserk looking. Final Fantasy, I don't know. Even Final Fantasy well, yeah, tries a bit harder than that. I, I mean, mean, it kind of looks like the Buster Sword, but not really. It looks kind of like a Omega Weapon in one of the in one of the things. Uh, yeah, I guess it is Buster Swordy. To be fair, I thought you meant specifically yeah. the MMO. This is one of those things though, where it's like they have this amazing quote in Secrets of the Obscure, where like there's, I can't remember the context. It's like some suffering writer who has got like some critic and the critics going on and on and on about how clearly they were too limited to do this thing. But the writer, it was intentional. It wasn't limitation. It was intentional that it was this way. Right. And I mm. feel, I feel like this is what this sword is like. It probably is meant to look really big and blunt and chunky and simplistic is meant to. So yeah, it, course. You know, to me, it looks a bit rubbish, but I think that's just purely taste. <laughs> anyway, that's not it's not the elite specialization, guys. Next, we're it's looking at we're looking at Mesm Yes, an easy weapon for cosplayers to make. That's very funny. Um, all right, rifle, rifle Mesmer. Yeah. Direct yeah, allies to the nearest emergency exit. Holy, does this have portal interactions? Yeah, there's some. There's an, some interesting skills on this. Now, it's important to note that I don't know if you noticed it or not. That a little while ago, they they previewed um, some uh, balance changes as well before the the these weapons. Uh, yeah, I think I did read those. And you saw the changes that were coming to Mesmer. What what was the change to Mesmer? Maybe I didn't read it, actually. Essentially, some changes to inspiration to make it so that uh, they have outgoing healing rather than just income. Uh, oh like, yeah, uh, yeah, I do remember. This was a while ago, right? But essentially, it looked like they were creating a space for support Emesma stuff. And exactly. The, and I think this is supposed to go with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think um, it's been pretty easy to guess or to expect some kind of support mesmer thing it's the same as the warrior thing they're really lacking that specific weapon that's very good for it if you look early early on you can kind of say staff had a lot of support elements mm -hmm. but as power creep and stuff's moved on um you know a little bit of boon splashes it bounces around your allies the auto and, and a chaos storm really isn't enough um yeah so, uh, let's see what they say. So, specifically, we're talking about heal support here, is what I would expect. But this Paul thing, this is that's inspired. That's a very, very cool idea, very mesmery. If it yeah. gives people many... They can press F to to get away or something? I don't know. I, something like that. I, it, you, we'll read about it, and I'll talk about... Oh, yeah, yeah. and it's a rifle as well, so clearly they're doing like a... It's a portal gun. Clearly, it's like <laughs> yeah. a Va Valve-inspired portal thing. Yeah, of course, yeah. Oh wow, that's very clever. That's a, that's a nice bundle of ideas that mm. that kind of work together. Okay, here we go. The rifle is a long-range support weapon, packed with healing and mm. tools to help your allies. Portal power. The rifle is a versatile weapon. As an example of its flexibility, skill three, inspiring imagery, allows the mesmer to throw out a beacon for their allies to rally to that will burst after a delay, and grant them might and fury. However, the Mesmer can detonate the beacon early in a pinch with abstraction, which becomes available when inspiring imagery is used. When the beacon is detonated early, it heals allies instead of granting boons while also damaging enemies. I like this thing where players... I don't know how well it really works out in practice, but this thing where, like, I'm low, so I actually look at my environment to move to an area to heal. Like, that's one of the reasons I've always liked the idea of medkit on NG, the idea that they're dropping med packs around, and the player mm -hmm. actually has to use a little bit of situational awareness to see them and walk into them. Or, you know, like the dragon hunter thing with a trap that gives all the little Aegis shards. That yeah, stuff's really they, cool they to me. They've kind of gone away from that a lot, because... It's too much. It's, it's too much for people to do, yeah. Like, But yeah, exactly. I, I, re I really <laughs> like the concept. I think it's really good. And actually, I, I've, I've always thought, like, especially with Medkit NG, 
uh, in a dream scenario, Medka NG is like one of the best healers in the game. Like it's obscenely strong. But the downside is your players in your raid scenario all have to be thinking about the med packs. You know, yeah. there are more remember like that, uh, remember that Ventari Revenant build I made a long time ago. Uh, a Ventari Re uh, you making a Ventari Rev build? Yeah, like way back when it was a, a boots bad build back in the day. What was the gimmick of it? The gimmick was Wasn't... when you detonate the uh, the. Oh, it tablet. drops all the little um, exactly and things. So it was yeah, like PVP. You stayed on point and just your the new and you run around collecting was, them. Yeah, <laughs> collecting all the things. Yeah, yeah. I, really I really like that stuff. I think the collecting stuff is cool and it's supported like mechanically, like in terms of how it's coded and stuff in Guild Wars. All those are really cool interactions. I love the pickup stuff. And there's mm -hmm. anyway. So we're a little bit off topic here, but the the thing where there's this big light that people walk to for boons. It's such I'd a like cool in concept. What that looks like. I um, want, it um, has to be like very shiny for people to actually go to it though. Yeah, and how? I mean, well, in reality, what are we actually talking about here for like PVE stuff? A new strike mission comes out, a new fractal comes out, or whatever. Surely the mesmer's just casting that on the boss, and nobody does anything. It, surely it's or just casting it on the people. Well, yeah, but I mean, everyone's sta this is the problem with Guild Wars. Everyone just stands together in giant boon stacks. Nobody yeah. talks about it anymore because the discussion is like so old it's over. But it really, really hamstrings what should have been a very cool, like dynamic experience for the game. But everyone's just on one pixel fighting the same thing all the time. Anyway, that's kind of totally different conversation. The weapon gets even more exciting when we look at skill five singularity shot. You shoot a bullet at a target location that grants barrier and resistance to nearby allies. A uh, singularity will linger at the Im barrier is just everywhere now, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's Everything. Great. There's no such thing as a support without barrier. Um, well, that's not really true, but here they're just throwing it everywhere. A singularity will linger at the impact, and it can be collapsed with dimensional ap aperture. The reactivation of skill five. The collapsed singularity becomes a single-use one-way portal that an ally can use to teleport to your location. So it's um, it's like a you know, Scourge has, um, oh my god, what, a Sands... It's, it's just uh, called Sandpool, I think. I think that's, I'm and... confusing myself. I think it's just called Sandpool. Maybe. No, Sand it's... something. It's, it's, it's... I can't remember. Anyway, it's like that, but you'll TP to the Mesmer instead. But only yeah, one on guy. a weapon instead of utility skill. Yeah. And that's huge as well, definitely. The skill yeah. can be a powerful tool to bail an ally out from a sticky situation with careful positioning. Rifle will often will open support options for Mesmers and provide interesting decision points for players in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. I like yeah, that. Now, one player, like though, it's, you it's can't build strats great... around it with just one player. It... Yes, so here's the thing. It's such a great idea to have it on a weapon like that, and um, in in practice, like you're not going to be saving players that got into sticky situations because they aren't, you know, aren't particularly fantastic you know what i mean like if they're getting themselves themselves into sticky situations that they shouldn't be getting themselves in probably they won't be able to press f on the portal oh won't that's a thought that's won't quite necessarily thought. know that the portal's there um yeah. however it does open up the ability to um do some very interesting things probably i'm not smart enough to do them but probably there's going to be some sick plays and stuff uh done by really good players because of this now in pvp probably as well um and in world versus world yeah for sure um i think it, it also for just jumping puzzles add an extra little bit of <laughs> easiness to the portal well stuff. okay so here's the question is, is it it's a straight up portal that it can take you onto different you know off the nav mesh or whatever it can take you up and down it you know is there there's not you, will you yeah, get no valid paths be, with it i, I hope, don't think so and also the other question is range does it have the range of an actual mesmer portal you know can no, i cast that it's rifle main. so this is it so it, yes it's probably rifle range to place but if i run away really far point. can it can it exactly will it treat it My like a full-on portal that's what I'm wondering because it brings. It says in the text, it says it brings you back to the mesmer. Yeah. Uh, not. It doesn't say back to where the mesmer was when they first cast it. It says back to the mesmer. No. Yeah. Exactly. And it wouldn't really so, work very well if it was just where the mesmer cast it. Exactly. So the question is, can you place a portal somewhere else? 
place the portal there, shoot this bullet at someone, get them to you take uh, after you've taken the portal 5,000 away or something like that. You know what you've got to be thinking about as well, Boots, is how that chains with other portals, the standard portal, and how you can exploit that in adventures. Yes, exactly. I'm definitely going to probably... Well, if, if it's for somebody else, I don't know how it works for adventures because your adventures are pretty solo. No, but what I mean is someone else can set a portal up. Oh, you yeah, start the adventure, yeah, yeah. you press F on it, and then... You go ahead or something. All right, we've got to watch the trailer. We haven't done that yet. I'm going to click it okay. now. Good classic looking pink Silvari. We're in awe. Oh, I see. That was the giant beam thing. Oh, yeah. There's the whole thing with clones as well. And what's the phantasm? Every weapon needs a phantasm. They didn't even talk about that. And there's no phantasm in the video either. It's true. They don't really show anything properly in the video, it looks like. Yeah, this is a super, like, vanilla kind of classic. <laughs> yeah. I um, think, how many skills do we see in this video? Can we can we go over it again? Yeah, I'm watching it in slow-mo at the moment. Uh, we get a good long look of the Silvari. We get three separate shots of the Silvari. We get a whole shot of the Unsheath. Wow, Silvari wielding a rifle. Okay, and then four seconds in, we're, we get the auto. It looks, I, I can't Marauder. see any Condies coming out of the auto. I think I saw a split second of the beacon. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, oh. the um, we didn't the, see any teleporting. The beacon ability looks a bit like it, it's like a recolored version of the short bow, um, renegade stuff, right? Or just rev short bow, I guess, because it's all decoupled now. Where like you shoot the bullet into a portal, which then appears at a location, which is very on yeah. theme, I suppose. I, I doubt that actually matters for anything else. It also looks like that generates a clone when you do that, unless they're running yeah. like Signet and the Signet's creating the clone or whatever. Right. And then the clones yeah. are shooting the rifles too, but we don't see them do anything else, obviously. Yeah. And so, is the only healing from the beacon? On skill three. That's a good question. I would assume not. I thought okay. I would have thought healing mesmer rifle. They would have talked a little bit about how you like you dedicate your target and ally or whatever. Yeah, but it is nice that it is. I'm guessing a long ranged area heal, which is what it seems like it is. What I will say is, um, they said at the header of the blog post that it's full of healing. They didn't say anything else. They said it's full of healing. So I do trust them that it, there's going to be a lot of like just straight up healing. Also, there's something weird about this trailer. Have you noticed? What? When they're fighting a Risen, right? Mm -hmm. They're fighting a Risen, and uh, about 10 seconds, they use a giant, like, the, 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 uh, a giant glowy white flash thing. And then once the Risen has suffered that ability, it just looks like a dude after they cut. It just looks yeah. like a bandit. How strange. Huh. It's not on screen yet. There you go. Look, look, look. It's just a woman now. It's just a, it's just a lady standing there. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Maybe they had to like reset, rejigger it or set it up or something. But there you go. Know. And maybe then the, the client maybe disappears. Maybe the person standing there is an ally that they're going to teleport, but they didn't actually show that happen. Oh, that's good. you got a good head on you there. I think you might be right about that. That's some, that's some okay. good behind the scenes speculation. <laughs> yeah, we had a really good trailer with the, the Scepter Rev, and now that's probably the worst trailer, I think. If I was doing that day by day and living and breathing for these, I might have been a bit disappointed in that one. Um, yeah. <clears throat> all right, so last three now, I think. Oh, no, I think two more. Four. Yeah, three, three, three. We got Ellie. Four? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Engineer as well. All right, so here we go. So we're halfway, guys, basically. Halfway. Just over halfway. So pistols grant elementalists the choice between damage and defense. Very curious about this one. This one is just a main hand, right? But you get attunements. Right. You know, lots of skills. So there's lots actually skills. there's a bomb of skills here. This is the most skills we're going to be looking at. And Probably. The, I, or were you one of the people who were like sad that you don't get a short bow or something or a long bow? Yeah, I think that that would have been a good choice as well. Yeah, for sure. I think there's a good theme match with. I'm uh, happy with the pistol. That's all. Okay. Well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of buttons, and I doubt we see many of them here based on the way it's been going. But there is a lot in the post here. So here we go. Yeah. The pistol is Condi focused weapon that brings some mobility. Crowd can see. Immediately, I'm thinking, okay, well, Scepter already does very good Condi and is the same damage Ooh, range. Ooh, what? Is it a really a Condi weapon? Scepter does incredibly good Condi. Hell yeah, it does. Uh, massive not condi. really yes not really. really yes it does no not really okay no. it doesn't guys uh the pistol <laughs> no, is a condition a power weapon the pistol is a condition focused weapon that brings some mobility crowd control and a lot now the crowd control sounds 
like a good thing to have there at that damage range. Sure, yeah. And a large amount of damage. The pistol will provide some interesting gameplay decisions with its element bullet mechanic that grants players a selection of bonus effects. Every time you use a pistol skill, except an auto, one of two things will happen. If no bullet of the same element exists, the skill will perform its base behavior and create a bullet of its element. A bullet will then hover near the player character to signify it's been created. However, if a bullet already exists, then the skill consumes it to gain a bonus effect. For example, let's check two skills from Earth Achievement. Shattering Stone, which is skill 2, and Boulder Blast, which is skill 3. Shattering Stone fires a shot that inflicts bleeding and cripple, shattering into multiple fragments that also strike nearby enemies. If an Earth bullet is available, it will be consumed to grant the user an enhancement that makes them their next few attacks also inflict bleeding. Oh my god. Boots, I, I kind of got the picture as I was reading it. I was like, okay, so we just get a bonus proc based on whatever yeah, the... Yeah, based pre on the skill you use. But this is not just one bonus proc. This is a proc on the next few attacks. Exactly. Um, Boulder Bar... And so you can stack up all the attunements and then, yeah. Yeah, bold, and I can see what you meant with like the, the hammer orb example at the start of this video. Mm -hmm. um, Boulder Blast uh, shoots a large projector, larger projectile that strikes a single enemy, immobbing them and inflicting a large amount of bleeding. If an Earth bullet is available, it's consumed to grant the user barrier if the projectile successfully strikes an enemy. In this case, depending on the sequences of skills, players can either opt for more damage or more defense, depending on the situation at hand. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. So... Oh, oh, hold on, hold pretty... on. We got we got the weaver okay. bit as well, real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Weaver makes things a bit more complicated as they can attune to.